Hooligan Hockey fans, are you ready to brave the wild with me, your host, Paladino Joey? It is Saturday, January 4th, 2014. This is episode number 74 of Brave the Wild, which is available on the sportstuff.com and on iTunes. I thank each and every one of you always for downloading and listening to this show, which caters to all of you hockey heads, hockey fans out there, puck heads, whatever you want to call us. <laughs> it caters to all of you. We are back to talk hockey once again. And of course, <laughs> in the state of hockey, the Minnesota Wild. Yes, sir. Well, we're saving Mike Yo. I guess that's the <laughs> that's the title of this episode. Saving Mike Yo for now. Not necessarily for the rest of the year or anything. Hmm. <laughs> At least according to Lou Nanny on both of the uh, the Dan Barrero and Judd and Dubay shows, both of them, Lou Nanny's not necessarily saying fire Mike Yo, but he's not really, uh, you know, you're not really getting a good, yeah, when you read between the lines per se, as Dan Barrero said, not really getting a good feeling that Mike Yo is the right coach for this team in any way, shape, or form. That's just how it goes, though. We'll see how it, uh, but hey, two two wins for the Wild after Yet another disappointing <laughs> New Year's Eve. It seems like the Wild always make our New Year's Eve frustrating and disappointing year in and year out. We always play on New Year's Eve at home, and it's always a loss, it seems like. And it's always a very boring game. Like last year against Anaheim, very boring game. This year against St. Louis, boring game. But yes, as per usual, we will have the segments, the reviews, the three three games to review this week. Two and one for the Wild, but yep, three games We'll do that. Of course, hand out our weekly awards and demerits, of course. The Mike Madonna Award, which should be an obvious one if you've been paying attention. Oh, yeah. And it was going to be him anyway until... Yeah, it was going to be him anyway when I saw him score his first goal tonight. Yes, that being... Yeah, somebody. We'll get to that in a little bit. (laughs) The James Shepard... We'll get to that later, too. We're, we're, We're getting there. We're getting there. So, and of course... Segment number two will be the previews and a brief checkup on the Iowa Wild, who will continue to be shuffling with the Minnesota Wild back and forth over and over and over again due to injury, due to everything else. It's getting pretty crazy. <sighs> yeah, so first we'll start off with a couple of little news items. Of course, Zach Parisi is still out with the fracture in his foot. Unfortunately, that, was, that took place against the St. Louis Blues a few weeks back. Played on it for a while, and then all of a sudden, well, it's like, hey, it's not really getting better. It actually is getting a little maybe worse, a little, a lot of pain and such. So Parisi still on the shelf for the time being. We'll see what happens there. Josh Harding got sick, unfortunately. He did play well in the St. Louis game. That's the game when he actually played. Then got sick, unfortunately. But, hey, luckily it didn't matter. Nicholas Baxter picking up a couple wins this coming week. That's the good part. But real quick, we're going to get from something. We're going to get to the Facebook page for Brave the Wild. Simply type in Brave the Wild Minnesota Wild Show on the Facebook page. It would be very much appreciated. That's all you got to do. Go there and click like. So, yes, Mark Carlson with some nice things to say as we head into the new year here. And, by the way, I hope all of you had a happy new year and all that. So, and welcome to 2014. <laughs> yes, sir. I hope I didn't say 2013. <laughs> this is January 4th, 2014. I hope I said that right. I don't know. Mark Carlson says, well, here we are, New Year's Eve, and got the blues. <laughs> I want to thank you, Paladino Joey and Nate Dog, for a fun podcast this year, and wish you and the Minnesota Wild all the luck in 2014. I should also tell you, there was a favorite moment a few podcasts ago that had me laughing so hard. Nate gave an award, I mean Neil, of course, gave an award to, heck, I can't remember, <laughs> okay, Whoever hurt himself in the pregame warm-up. <laughs> Just the way Neil said it. So funny. Anyway, I hope we can show these Blues teams who is the star of the North. Happy New Year, Mark from Iowa. And thank you very much, Mark. That was very cool. Oh, Neil. Yeah, Neil is a real funny guy, isn't he? And that's that's part of the that's part of what's fun having him on the show. He he knows his hockey, but he also can be pretty wacky and we have a nice little laugh back and forth with each other, tease each other a little bit and joke about things here and there, but we also try to obviously stick serious enough to stick to the wild. We don't want to be like one of those other shows in town here. Not not a podcast like regular radio. Uh-huh. All nine to noon. He's a little too silly on KFN. Just a little bit, in my opinion. 
Um, but no, thank you very much for that, Mark. And hopefully I gotta get Neil back on here pretty soon. I haven't haven't been hearing much from him the last past uh, week or so. I'm not sure if he's been listening or what the deal is. We'll see. Got to get back in touch with Mr. Nate Dog. Would be very much appreciated indeed. Oh man, so thank you for that, Mark. So yeah, simply go to Brave the Wild Minnesota Wild Show in the Facebook bar and for Twitter, give me a follow at Brave the Wild. On there would be appreciated. And don't forget there is a phone line. The line is 209-736-7877. 209-736 Seven eight seven seven. I'd like you to call in, guys. Call in anybody at some point. Yep, Mark Carlson, Sebastian Balls, Brent Jacobson, somebody I haven't met yet. Hey, hop on board. That would be terrific. So let's get to the game reviews. Okay, well there it is. <laughs> the St. Louis Blues on December the thirty first, and it was one of the most boring games I've ever watched. I've ever I've just ever seen. Um, Mike Yo, obviously a leading topic coming into this one. I mean, there's news all over the place this week with Mike Yo, possible, possibly on the chopping block, and have I have no <laughs> no problem with that thought at all. I mean, it's time to get a little impatient with the way things are going because it's just been going on every single year. Like I said in the last episode, where the Wild start really good, it looks really awesome. He's pushing all the right buttons. The players are responding great. And then the swan dive comes because somebody, maybe just one player gets hurt and he doesn't seem to know what to do. He keeps panicking, he keeps shuffling the lines every five seconds and then starts saying stuff that he probably shouldn't in the press conferences or whatever. He said, be it he has no answers or he's not talking to the players or it was just horrendous and oh my God, what are we going to do? All that kind of stuff. It's just too much. Like against the New York Islanders game, of course, last week, which was a show that was <laughs> very recent here. Um, Mike Yo sounded like he was about to, like, I don't know, it sounded like he was having an anxiety attack. It was pretty frustrating to listen to. But, under, I mean, understandable, losing that game, I'm sure he is nervous, thinking his job's on the line. And after the St. Louis game, when basically nothing happened, I mean, Ryan Suter, the man of the hour, will say, <clears throat> Scores with only nine seconds left. Wild down two nothing after T.J. Oshie had scored much earlier in the game. Um, and then Jaden Schwartz assisting on that. Then he simply scores. Jaden Schwartz. These were both in the second period. Schwartz getting his 14th goal of the year. Just a boring game. Really, really boring game. And it's just classic New Year's Eve, boring hockey. Uh, Coyle and Koivu assisting on Ryan Suter's goal. A nice wrist shot by him. Which he seems to be extremely good at. <laughs> yeah, he's he's got a. I mean, he's got a nice shot. It seems like most of the time though, he's just kind of putting the puck on net. But when he's actually shooting to score, it's pretty good. I'm very impressed, actually. <laughs> oh man, it's been fun watching him score lately. It's been crazy watching. It's been so often. All of a sudden, he went from no goals to more. <clears throat> We're getting there. Very very cool. So it was nice to see Ryan getting his second goal of the season, but hey, too little, too late. Nine seconds left. Time ran out. The Wild lose the face off. Whatever, game over. That was all there was. <laughs> was all there was to it in that one. The Wild muster up twenty-five shots in the game, but they didn't really. None of them really were that big of a, a deal. Nothing really special throughout the game. Elliot didn't have to put up too much resistance to stop the Wild in this one. Josh Harding was pretty darn good, actually. Well, not great. He only faced 23 shots, but he stopped 21 of them, I guess. He wasn't terrible. I mean, he certainly didn't get us killed like he did previously against the uh, the Islanders. He had a horrible game against them. Just horrible. Looked like the old Harding. The Harding before this year, when he was terrible last year. Looked like last year's version of Harding in that one. But looked like this year's version of Harding again, for the most part, against the St. Louis Blues. But then, unfortunately, falling ill, like a lot of people right now, like my fiance, like my my trainer slash friend at work, Jefferson, a lot of people getting sick like crazy, just all over the place. People on Twitter talking about it, people on Facebook talking about it. It's all over the place. Oh, luckily it ain't me. (laughs) Everybody out there, you need to take your vitamins. (laughs) You know, I mean, hey, there's four different vitamins you could take. (laughs) There's four different vitamins you could take to build up your immunity, and it's important to take all four because, you know, you know how they say too much of one thing is, 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 isn't is going to get you anywhere? Well, when you have four different things, it's not going to hurt you at all. It's actually going to help quite a bit. Like vitamin A, <laughs> vitamin D3, vitamin C, and zinc. 
There you go. Anyhow, back to this <laughs> off the off the lecture. There, <laughs> I just had to throw that in there. Um, the Wild didn't didn't take their vitamin D, I guess, in this one. I don't know what it is. Well, I guess maybe they did. Their defense was good, but everything else wasn't. <laughs> Whatever. Just crappy game. Nothing really. I don't even really want to say much about that one. It was just such a snooze fest. So I don't want to bore you guys anymore talking about that one. So then Thursday, January 2nd, a little more positivity coming in. The Wild score nine goals in two games. Thursday and then tonight, Saturday, January the 4th. Buffalo and Washington. Yeah, Buffalo's a pathetic. They're an AHL team, and if the Wild lost that game, Mike Hill would certainly have been fired. So he saved his job there, and then tonight's game against Washington. He may be saved his job even more, at least for the time being. For the time being. I mean, I, I don't know. It's nice to see the Wild actually start a little miniature win streak here and to score nine goals against a couple of Eastern Conference teams, which is something I thought the Wild were going to do last week against the Rangers and, and the Flyers and stuff. No, it didn't happen <laughs> at all. But luckily the Wild, 2-0 and against Washington this year. They did get a shootout victory uh, about a month ago against the Capitals. Now a 5-3 to victory, but yeah, I'm getting way ahead of myself here. Way ahead indeed. So, uh, but yeah, after the St. Louis game, Mike Yo did what I basically wanted to do about that game. He was he said, "Oh, I'm not talking to the players anymore." So that also a something of note that shows the situation, the seriousness of the situation with Mike Yo as the head coach of the team. So I mean, <laughs> I'm almost forgetting about it because of how fun things have been the past two nights. But hey, I mean, reality may set in very quickly here. When we look into the upcoming schedule, it may send in very, very quickly with Mike Yo, the Minnesota Wild, uh, and, and the ownership and such. Yeah. All right. So, back to the positivity as I continue to bounce around. Buffalo Sabres. <laughs> yeah, which will also be the new team for Zenon Kanapka, who has put on waivers. Because the Wild seem to have um, suddenly have a, uh, a wealth of fourth-line centers in the system and such that keep coming up, or getting sent down, coming up, sent down, and they still have Mike Rupp and all that, too. Surprised that Eric Halle isn't back up centering that fourth line, even though his offense wasn't nearly as um, effective as it had been or very early on when he started with the Wild, but Zenon Kanapka put on waivers and then claimed by the Buffalo Sabres, so the best face-off guy and one of the better fighters in hockey will no longer be a part of the Minnesota Wild organization, but he will go to Buffalo. Uh, why does Buffalo need Zenon Kanapka, who is in his 30s? I have no idea. A team that's clearly starting over in every single facet of the game. No more Thomas Manick, no more Jason Pominville, no more this, no more that. But they still have Steve Ott, who was a huge, <laughs> he was a huge nemesis for the Wild in his Dallas Stars days. Kind of wish he was still there, just to make things more interesting here in the uh, now the now Central Division. Is Ryan Miller the next guy to go? The possibility, or yeah, is he the next guy to go from the Buffalo Sabres? We'll see. The Wild had their way with him for the most part, scoring four goals, or three goals really, because the fourth one was an empty netter when the Sabres are trying any type of last-ditch effort. Nicholas Backstrom only faced 20 shots in this game and stopped 19 of them. Not bad. We'll take it any day of the week. The Wild really clamped down on defense again, which is... Ridley has been Mike Yo's focus, obviously going into the St. Louis game and then going into these two because things really were getting way too wide open for the the Wild, giving up way too many points, goals anyway, the past, past, I mean, out east and such, that was a joke. So, yes, the clamping down, that's a good sign. It's just, unfortunately, in a lot of ways, the Wild had been too conservative, way too conservative in that St. Louis game. But, hey, scoring on Buffalo and scoring on Washington, we'll take it. Wild have a nice, fun little game here. And there was really no point in this game that you got the feeling like the Wild were going to give up the lead this time around. There, there was really no reason at all. Scandella with a, his second goal of the year. Matt Cook and Justin Fontaine out there. Third liners with Marco Scandella tearing up on that one. Oh, that second line. Actually, it's the first line now. It's really the three top players right now with Zach Parisi being out. Pominville getting his 18th goal of the year, leading the team Overall, Koivu and Suter leading the team in assists. <laughs> Assisting on that one. That was a beauty. A nice wrister by Jason Pominville. And then Jason Zucker, the other Jason. The other guy that you would 
hope at some point could stick on that second line and be a factor, because obviously Pominville's up to the first line with Parisi being out right now. That cute little second line, and I, I, I was just thinking about it. I was like, you know, I really kind of like it. Granlin, Niederreiter, and Zucker. That's kind of cool. Obviously, you want Pominville there. In a, in a perfect world, Pominville would be on that one, because how well Granlin and Pominville play together. But to see Granlin, Niederreiter, and Zucker team up for a goal, that was really cool. Nice to see Zucker's first goal of the year. Wild up 3 nothing, and this was after a scoreless first period, which is kind of surprising and a little scary, actually, for, for me, and I'm sure a lot of uh, other Wild fans out there, but mostly for Mike Yo, because it's like, dude, he's done. <laughs> if we don't start scoring here soon, this this is, this thing is over for Mike Yo. <laughs> we lose this thing like one nothing or something, it's over. <laughs> but no, nice, nice little 21-year-old line here. 21 is the oldest player on this line, and it was... Just a nice little goal there. 3 nothing Minnesota. Nice to see a little chemistry by these guys teaming up on this one. Yes, indeed. Matt Ellis scoring late in the third period after a lot of just kind of keep away from the Buffalo Sabres and kind of clamping down and such because it wild up three goals. I don't think the Sabres are going to pose any threat even if Nicholas Backstrom is in net and even if Nicholas Backstrom has been playing poorly for the last... Uh, <laughs> for the last several weeks here. Nice to see Nice to see the Wild pull this out. Braziak was able to get an empty netter from Suter and Koivu. And that was all she wrote, because the Wild were basically on a quote-unquote penalty kill situation in that one, with Koivu and, and Braziak out there at the same time. Sorry about this noise here. But uh, Braziak, <laughs> who'd really been under fire and been moving down to the fourth line in this situation... Moved down to the fourth line because he's been so unproductive on the offense. Is able to at least get an empty netter, and that's great, I guess. I mean, hey, take it while you can, I suppose. <laughs> Three goals on the year after a really nice year two years ago. Brozniak has definitely been a very quiet center for the Wild of late, but still nice defensively nonetheless on that third line. Though now, of course, down to the fourth with the... <laughs> With the Tory Mitchells and Stefan Veus of the world, that line has actually been playing pretty well, to be honest. Um, and now you got, now you got Charlie Coyle, which I'm gonna, who I'm going to talk about right now. Charlie Coyle is now the third line center. The third line center is Charlie Coyle because obviously Brozniak on the fourth. Third line is Charlie Coyle, and you know that's about what he is right now. Even though. A lot of us will agree that Charlie Coyle is better suited at the wing position versus the center position. He's he's a third liner right now. I mean, you look at Charlie Coyle with his production level this whole season, it just ain't there. Um, It's not happening yet. I do believe he it's still coming, and maybe his knee has been still bothering him. I, I don't know, because it seemed like when he first started out the season like this young man is on the verge of a huge breakout year and no breakout is happening right now with with Charlie Coyle no breakout whatsoever what is it 14 points in <clears throat> excuse me yeah 14 points in 31 games now 32 games for Charlie Coyle that's just not enough it's not terrible it's not terrible but still or is it 11 I mean I'm getting all mixed up right now I mean Charlie Coyle yeah, he's he's good, you know, in, in traffic. He, he hangs on to the puck. That's great. You can't really take the puck away from him and all that good stuff. I appreciate that, but the production is not there. And, yes, it's 11. I mean, I was totally wrong on the 14. It's 11. Only four goals and seven assists. I'm not saying he's a bust. Obviously not. But when you're tied with Marco Scandella, boy, man. I mean, I and, yes, he's played nine less games than Marco Scandella, but still. <laughs> Excuse me, and you're tied with Kyle Brozniak, Danny Heatley, eh, guys like that. It's just, I don't know. It's frustrating. I mean, hopefully Charlie Quayle can start finding the net some more here or assisting on some more goals. I don't know, but right now I think that third line is best suited for him, right? Uh, unfortunately, you know, Matt Cook, Coyle, and of course, uh, well, it keeps changing, but now it's, yeah, it's Fontaine again, of course. Now he had a possible concussion in practice the other day here, so now it's beginning to, now we're really beginning to wonder what's going on. The injuries are stirring them out a little bit, and that's obviously a huge frustration for all of us Wild fans in a big way. Hopefully things can come around with that. I, I, uh, 
it didn't sound like it's the worst thing in the world. Of course, it was in practice, so I would hope a concussion in practice isn't going to be as bad as a concussion in a game, but who am I to say? Again, Charlie Coyle really hoping that the production level picks up. Really disappointing to see him as a third liner, but that's right now, that's exactly who he is. There's just no doubt about it. I'm, I'm not mad about that move by Mike Yo or possibly a Chuck Fletcher having some influence on that one. It's been a it's been it's been a it's been an underwhelming year for Charlie Coyle, honestly. And I'm not the only person saying it. I've been hearing people call into shows locally saying the similar thing. Not very often, but a little bit. So now we head to tonight's game against the Washington Capitals, a team with a similar record to the Wild, who's now 2016 and six. The Wild now 22, 17 and five. So. Still above 500 reasonably, which is nice. But we're merely in the playoff hunt still to this day. In the playoff hunt. And the way this game started, it was pretty scary. Now, it wasn't right out of the gate, but, well, eight minutes in to see the Washington Capitals get a couple of softies here on Nicholas Backstrom. couple of softies. I mean, he looked pretty slow on these. Marcus Johansson with his sixth goal of the season on the power play. And, I mean... The power play had just started, and it was just boom right away. Ah, oh, boy, oh boy. Ovechkin and Nicholas Backstrom, that power play line, those guys are pretty damn good over there in Washington. Nicholas Backstrom was 36th assist on a year. You just look at that, and it's like, geez, just dominant. So to see Washington go up one nothing just like that, it was quite frustrating, but literally right off the faceoff, <laughs> Washington simply putting the puck on net, and it went right over Backstrom. Right over his shoulder, 2-0 two, two Washington right away. And it's like, okay. All right, that was that was not good. I mean, it just went right down there. Huh. Well, all right then. Um, This isn't working out too good here. Hmm. 2 nothing. Well, I guess Mike Yo's going to get fired tonight. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Who knows what they're really thinking. But, yeah, when Mike Green got that second goal right away, it was like, oh, boy, this is not good. The Wild put the clamps down for the most part, but it's just like, oh boy, why do I have a, why do I have a feeling I'm going to see the puck at the back of the net again? When <laughs> when, the, when the Washington puts the puck on goal, why do I have a feeling something's going to happen again? Luckily it didn't. And that second period was a thing of beauty for the Minnesota Wild. Oh, it was fun. To see Niederreiter score fairly early his eighth goal of the year. Niederreiter playing on the third line tonight. Again, the, I'm getting confused with some of these lines. It's getting crazy. But, yeah, it's getting very confusing. But you know how Mike Yo is. He shuffles stuff even in the game sometimes. So, it's okay. I'm not complaining. Nice goal by Nino Niederreiter. Eighth of the year. Charlie Coyle and Cook assisting on that one. But then, and then it began. And Ryan Suter to get... <laughs> Ryan Suter. Ah, beautiful power play goal. Washington getting a couple of penalties within a few seconds of each other. Five on three for the Minnesota Wild. Ryan Suter with a slap shot. Again, just simply putting the puck on net. Oh, it went in and the Wild tied it up. And it's like, okay, I think we're going to be all right now. But wait, it was five on four still. So we're still on the power play. And just moments later, Suter with a beautiful shot. And an equally awesome pass by Danny Heatley. Outstanding pass. Now, I thought it was Clayton Stoner, so I'm getting confused looking at this right now. Um, no, that was the hat trick. Pardon me, it was ha- ha- it was the hat trick. I'm getting confused here. That was the hat trick goal. Yeah, I already spoiled it, but you guys already know anyway. Wonderful passing by uh, Heatley and Koivu just sim- uh, getting it out to Suter with a really nifty wrist shot, and the puck went in again, and all of a sudden the wild go from being down to ahead. <laughs> Very cool on a five-minute span. Three to two Minnesota. That was so exciting. But then to see Washington tie it up. Mike Green with his second goal of the game. So it's like, oh, no. Now, now we got another guy with his second goal of the game for the Washington Capitals. Tie a game indeed. But then Jason Zucker with a nice tip in on the power play again. The Wild run the power play. Keith Ballard out there who had been playing, well, not so great of late, putting the puck on net. Jason Zucker tipping it in. It almost looked like Niederreiter hit it with his stick, but no. It was mostly Jason Zucker deflecting it, 
Niederreiter never actually put his stick on it, so the goal credited to Jason Zucker with his second goal in two nights, getting called up and scoring two goals. So very, very cool to see Zucker having a little nose for the net of late. So very early here, after a poor start to the season, getting sent back down, like about 17 times already. <laughs> but now, in his two games back up with the Wild, he scored two goals. Very cool to see that happening and to see him out there on the power play as well. Washington would never score again. And Ryan Suter, <laughs> of course, that wild up 4-3 to three at this point. Ryan Suter on a breakaway with Clayton Stoner, who made an awesome pass. And Suter with an equally awesome shot. I mean, Suter's shot is really good, like I've been saying. When he's actually shooting to score and not just putting the puck on net, per se, he's got a nice shot, and there it is. Suter with his first hat trick, first ever hat trick for a defenseman of the Minnesota Wild. And I hope people got their hats back, I, but I'm guessing they didn't and they were going to be freezing out there throwing winter hats on the ice. What are you thinking, guys? It's getting pretty cold out there, especially with this uh, polar vortex coming in. That's the weather term of it. It is. Uh, there's a reason why it's going to be extremely cold. There's a polar vortex <laughs> floating around. That is not good, so... Yeah, let's just say, let's just leave that as is. Google that if you're curious of what that is. Um, but Suter getting a hat trick. Very cool. Fifth goal of the year. A guy that went from no goals just about eight days ago to five. Hey, man. We'll take it. Keep it up, Suter. There it is. I mean, the guy has been tearing it up in a big way the past several several nights now. He's been racking up the assists of late as well. Not just the goals, but the assists. The goals are starting to come right now. That's the cool part, and we'll take it. And it's about time somebody started scoring on a more dominant level, <laughs> and it was Ryan Suter. Hey, it might as well be Ryan Suter if it's not going to be Pominville getting a hat trick. I guess it might as well be Suter. If it's not Koivu, well, Koivu's not really anyway, but Parisi's obviously hurt. Coyle, him, him getting a hat trick is like yeah, it's going to happen about as often as you get a polar uh, vortex around here. Like once every 15 years, the way he's going. <laughs> so, there it is. There it is. Plain and simple. Let's get to the awards. Let's get to the awards right now. Mike Madano Award is going to Ryan Suter. That's a no-brainer. Absolutely awesome week. And it was going to go to him even after his first goal because of how many assists he's been racking up of late. The guy has been playing awesome. And it's really cool. Even though he gets scored on once in a while on just ugly, ugly goals where people just blow by him. Well, not ugly goals, but ugly defensive plays by him where he basically gets frozen in, in, in time. <laughs> that can be awfully frustrating. But, hey man, <laughs> when he starts actually putting the puck in net now and uh, obviously is assisting on several, several pucks in net, Sometimes you can make some exceptions, and I'm not going to get too mad at him. So, let's go, Ryan Suter. Definite Mike McDonald Award winner. Let's move on. So, now we have um, the James Shepard Award. I'm going to give it to... Uh, I, guess, I guess I'll give it to Charlie Coyle. I'm, I'm not mad at him, but the lack of production by Charlie Coyle. And yes, he got his eighth assist tonight. There you go. There's his 12 point. So, I'm not too mad at him, but it'd be nice to see a little bit more out of him. I mean, it's been kind of an ongoing thing. There are other people I could give it to, quite frankly. But, I mean, Backstrom's actually been playing well now, for the I mean, even, though, even though the competition hasn't been too bad. But, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm going to give it to Backstrom for the time being. Clayton Stoner has been playing very well. I, I want to get mad at him, even, <laughs> even though he doesn't really score. But, again, there's no reason to get mad at him. Nobody's really blatantly, like, pissing me off lately, so I guess I'm just going to give it to Charlie Coyle, hoping for a little more production out of him. Oh boy, so Ryan Suter now with how many points? He's got 29 points on the year now. 29 points for Ryan Suter, both him and Jack Parisi named to the Olympic team. We'll see how healthy Parisi is when it's when that comes around, but I'm guessing he will play, I would hope. I would hope that foot is healed enough that he can play and he will be able to come back to the Minnesota Wild and be healthy as well. That would be great. Boy, nice nice little week for the Wild. A 2-1 and one record. Back in the hunt for the postseason. Not really uh, d dominating anything just yet. <laughs> not really, uh, yeah, not quite at this fifth seed, third seed range like the Wild were earlier in the year. So that's an obvious frustration for myself and others. But 
hey, at least they're kind of back in the hunt. Hopefully something can be built out of this. Oh, boy. I mean, I... Not as I'm not convinced yet. I'm sure a lot of you aren't as well. The Wild obviously not in a, in a guaranteed position right now to make the playoffs. They're fourth place in the Central Division. They lead the Dallas Stars by two points, but they trail the Colorado Avalanche for the third spot on the Central Division by seven points. That is not going to be easy. That is not going to be easy. The Wild card spot is well. The Wild are tied with the Phoenix Coyotes for that. That's the good news. Tied to the Coyotes, the 49 points. Though, of course, the Coyotes hold that, uh, unfortunately, because we lost to them. So they hold the tiebreaker there. The Wild also trail the Canucks for the number one wild card spot by four points. Wild with 49, Canucks with 53. So we'll see how things go here. <laughs> it's going to be a... The schedule's not going to get any easier. Luckily, it was easy, slightly easier uh, Wild definitely did not take advantage of it last week. They took a little bit of a... They took advantage of it this week, I guess. Yeah, because obviously St. Louis is not going to be an easy win. The Wild almost... I mean, I pretty much guaranteed a loss in that one. The Blues are one of the top three teams in hockey right now, if not number one in hockey. They are just tearing it up right now. And, of course, yeah, I mean, Buffalo is pretty much a guaranteed win unless you want to lose your job. They're just not, yeah, I mean, they, they got rid of everybody, and the, the Johan Larsons of the world aren't doing squat there right now. Washington Capitals, well, for whatever reason, they're, well, for one, they're not really a very good team, and at the same time, the Wild just seem to play well against them of late, and that is a good thing. So, with that, we're going to take a quick break, we're going to come back with the previews of another three games, and check in on the Iowa Wild. We'll be back right after this. shop on Amazon? Did you know that you can support this podcast just by doing your normal shopping on Amazon? It's really easy to do. Just go to thesportstuff.com and click on one of the many Amazon pictures. Do your normal shopping and Amazon sees that we referred you and they give us a percentage. We'd like to thank you in advance for supporting thesportstuff.com and please use our Amazon link. Now enjoy the rest of the show. here on Brave the Wild, episode number 74, which is a reminder for those of you out there on your mobile devices. For Apple devices, find us on iTunes. Type in Brave the Wild. Same for Android devices. Type in Brave the Wild when you go to the podcasting section on the Double Twist application. So all you have to do is get the Double Twist app for an Android device, which will basically mirror iTunes on that application. And on <laughs> Windows phones and BlackBerry phones, simply search for Brave the Wild in the store section. So, very simple there. Rock and roll. Alright, let's get back to the show. Let's get back to the... Well, let's get into the previews anyway. That's not a difficult thing, is it? No, no. Well, yeah, it's going to be difficult. (laughs) The Wild will, well, be hosted by the Los Angeles Kings on Tuesday, January the 7th. Wild almost never beat them. No. No, they don't. I hate the Kings. Wild always seem to have a hard time with them. They're doing very good. Uh, the Kings beat the Wild earlier in the season in a shootout very, very early. In fact, I believe it was the season opener. Yes, and yes, it was October the 3rd. The Wild lose a shootout, but they get a point. Jonathan Quick, not quite as bad as he was late last year in one of the shootouts. <laughs> Jonathan Quick was over three, three shots. Wild scored, and then he quickly broke his goalie stick, which I'm sure he regretted later. But I digress. Jonathan Quick and the 
semi-recent, well, yeah, the recent Stanley Cup champion, Los Angeles Kings, now, of course, dethroned last year by the Chicago Blackhawks, Sons of Biscuits. Um, of course, we'll be hosting the Wild. I'm guessing it will be Nicholas Backstrom in that again. Kings having a pretty good year, 25-13-4. and four. I'm sure they'll be right back in the postseason once again. Um, California and the Minnesota Wild just seems to never work out, ever. Uh, California and the Minnesota Timberwolves never seems to work out, ever. Once in a while it works for the Minnesota Vikings, but not always. That's kind of quirky. Sometimes it's real ugly, sometimes it's not. And the Twins probably pretty, yeah, the Twins never really win in California much either, do they? With all their 19 baseball teams they have over there, and their 19 hockey and 19, ba- okay. Uh, the LA Kings, well, their scoring is, is down a little bit from what it's been in the past. Kopitar's got 34 points leading the, the way. Mike Richards at 28. Justin Williams at 25. Nothing really all too spectacular. Dustin Brown is pretty much what he is, a stalwart defenseman. Um, scores a bit. He's actually kind of got very similar numbers to <laughs> to Jonas Brodeen, who obviously is one of the best up-and-coming defensemen in all of hockey. The LA Kings really putting the clamps down on everybody this season. Jonathan Quick, well, his numbers not necessarily as lights out as they've been in the past, but boy, all of his counterparts. I mean, he, there's three goalies. <laughs> there's been three goalies play, that have played for the Kings this year, and they're all doing pretty darn good. We may see Ben Shrives in this one instead of uh, Jonathan Quick. You know, like I mentioned, Quick's number's down a little bit to 2.35 goals against. Save percentage just barely over 90. Only one shutout. There have been six other shutouts by the LA Kings, and they have not been by Jonathan Quick. As I mentioned, Ben Shrives with his goals against average just under 2. Save percentage at 93%. And Martin Jones, my goodness. Goals against average, 1.41. This is in 11 games. Shrives has uh, started 15 games. He's played in 19. Uh, probably Jonathan Quick being pulled, unfortunately. Um, gee, many Christmas. I mean, geez, Martin Jones, 95% save percentage, 1.41. He is 8-3 and three on the year. Ben Shrives is 7-5. and five. 93% save percentage. Um, boy, I, I, I don't really want to face any of these guys because we saw what happened not too long ago. Former Stanley Cup champion with the Boston Bruins, Tim Thomas, when he went back in that after having a, he was having a disappointed year, disappointing year, and then he blew up. He shut the Wild down big time against the uh, Florida Panthers. That was extremely frustrating for all of us here in town. Yes, sir. Um, so I'm not really excited about facing any of these guys. <laughs> Long story short, the Wild will not win in L.A. No, and the Wild never win in L.A. So hopefully the Wild can get it done in the coming nights ahead. But this is definitely not going to help Mike Yo's... Uh, uh, if, if the Wild win in L.A., that will really help Mike Yo's cause. But losing in L.A. is not going to help. And I don't think the Wild will win the game. So, as I mentioned, long story short, we're looking at a... Uh, you know, it could be anything, right? It really could be anything. I'll just put in... I'll just chalk it up to 2-1. to one. I don't think the Wild are going to continue their dominant scoring. Not against those goalies. There's just no way. So they'll, it'll probably be a 5-4 to four game in favor of the Kings. We'll see what'll happen. I'm just messing with you. So then the Wild head to Phoenix. Oh, goody. Thursday, January the 9th. I'm going to preview four games. I'm going to have to. Yeah, I'm going to preview four games here. Um, pardon me. Because next, uh, yeah, because there's a back-to-back. There's a Saturday and Sunday coming up. So there's a good chance that I'll have to review both of those games. We'll see, though. Obviously, who knows? Maybe I'll record on Saturday night again. Uh, who knows what's going to happen? you got the NFL playoffs to deal with, too. So maybe I will do it that way. I, I don't know what I'm going to do exactly. <laughs> uh, LA, excuse me, what am I talking about? Phoenix Coyotes, pretty deep team, to be honest. Shane Doan's still hanging around. He's one of the last remaining Winnipeg Jets in existence. <laughs> he must have he's one of them as well with the Anaheim Ducks. Shane Doan still hanging on. He's been he's been kinda off and he's been kinda off injured a bit this year, but still playing very solid. They have a pretty deep team in terms of the consistent. There's nobody really dominating, but you got Verbeta, you got Ribeiro, uh Yandel, Hansel, Bug, uh Bodker and Doan, and then Hermetti and Larson all 
over 20 points so far. That's about eight players right there. So really an overall solid Phoenix team. Not a great team, but hey, they're they're a, they're a team the Wild need to beat if they hope to make the postseason. Even though they're fifth place in the West, or excuse me, the Pacific, they are uh, still obviously 20 and 12 on the year. They're having a very strong year. They've had nine shootout losses, though, which is kind of funny. <laughs> Their goalies have been in and out, but then again, actually, they're pretty solid. Eh, They're not great, though. They're not as good as the Kings goalies, Mike Smith and Thomas Grice. Not really spectacular. Grice has actually been all right. It's funny how all the backup goalies seem to be doing super good. (laughs) And the starters have been struggling. So the people that have been starting in the past have not been doing well. You had Lundquist not doing so well in New York. Uh, Tim Thomas had not been doing so well in Florida. You know, guys that are established guys that were great in the past haven't stru- having kind of not so good years of late. Um, like I mentioned, Jonathan Quick's numbers not quite where they were before when he was a Stanley Cup goalie with LA. And then all the backups are doing phenomenal. Nicholas Backstrom not doing well this year, but yet Josh Harding's been dominant. So it's weird. It's just one of those years. It's like the year of the former backup goalie or the backup goalie. And definitely not the year of the established goalie. It's been a strange season. I'm not really sure where to go with this one, with the Wild and Phoenix. I'm not too excited about it. Uh, I, I, know, I, I, I don't like when the Wild go to Phoenix. It never seems to work out. It just doesn't. Um, the Wild haven't... Well, actually, they have played them this year. Yes, and it was at home, and the Wild lost 3-1. to one. That's another Mike Yo fire watch. So we are on a Mike Yo fire watch. Since I was talking about weather earlier this year, there is a watch for a Mike Yo firing right now. We're issuing a watch. There'll be a Mike Yo warning, though, if another losing streak starts to pick up here with LA, Phoenix, and such. But um, a 3-1 to one loss in Phoenix last time around. Uh, I'm going to go with 3-2 to two loss in Phoenix this time around. Possibly we'll get to the shootout, but I don't think the Wild win this one. I would like to say they could, but... Who knows? I mean, they've been playing better of late, but my confidence level is very low in the on the road in the West right now. It is beyond low, and these are good teams. LA and Phoenix are good teams. Maybe they'll meet in the Western Conference Finals again. <laughs> yeah, that would be terrific. And then the Wild host the Colorado Avalanche on Saturday, January the 11th. Got a little little bit better feeling about this one, even though it's eh, you know they've been kind of tough. The Wild. Uh, Got beaten regulation on November 29th. Lost a really disappointing shootout. A back-to-back thing. A home-and-home thing with Colorado from Friday, November the 29th to November the 30th. We all remember that. The Wild lost both of them. I was extremely upset. This is a must... This is a as close to a must-win for the Wild as it can be because Wild and Colorado are, are fighting for that third playoff spot in this division. And the Wild are, what, seven points behind Colorado. That's a long ways. And you need to pick up some ground on Colorado by beating them in regulation on January the 11th. As mentioned, it is a home game, and I do think the Wild pull this one out. I think they'll feel the urgency and get it done. And if they don't, I think I'm going to make a prediction here. If the Wild do lose to L.A., and they do lose to Phoenix, and if they lose this home game to Colorado... Mike Yo will be fired. And we'll be talking about the next coach of the Minnesota Wild on episode 75. That is my prediction. Take it however you want. It's no offense to Mike Yo. He seems like the coolest guy in the world. And I'm going to make this statement about him right now. <laughs> well, a- at the AHL level, he is an, an elite head coach. At the NHL level, he is an excellent assistant coach. But again, at the NHL level, I think he is a below-average head coach at this point in time. He would be a perfect fit with the Buffalo Sabres, though. A team like that that's starting over and developing new players like the Johan Larsons and such. Matt Hackett. Guys like that. Hackett isn't even there yet, but you get the idea. Maybe an Edmonton Oilers. He could maybe get that team to start moving forward. But a team that's mixed with veterans and young guys? See, a lot of the young guys are doing well, like Nino Niederreiter and Mikhail Granlin. And Brodeen. See, that's cool. That makes Yo look good. But when the team as a whole is losing and the veterans are rolling their eyes like this guy is just not seemingly putting things together right now, when you're in a win-now situation, Mike Yo's the wrong guy. When you're in a developmental situation, Mike Yo is gold. <laughs> not gold. He's silver. He's silver. <laughs> he's silver. He's a, uh, yeah, for a developmental team like a Buffalo 
a uh, New York Islanders, an Edmonton Oilers, a team like that, that's got some young guys and very few veterans, and they're trying to get to that next level, per se, he's he's pretty good. And that's what the Wild were going to be until all of a sudden, up oh, here we go, Suter and Parisi. But, of course, we knew the Wild were going to make a move, and we already had Koivu and Backstrom and such. So you kind of figured the Wild were going to make a move. They were gearing up to make cap space. So Chuck Fletcher, this one's on you, buddy. Love you. Love the draft picks you've made. I like most of the trades you've done, including the Pominville one, which at one point people were a little nervous about. Oh boy, not another Cam Barker. No, obviously Pominville is better than Barker ever would be, no matter what. No matter what. No matter how poor Pominville would have played. <laughs> and how good the other ones would have been. Nick Letty and Barker was a nightmare. But a lot of people were scared that Matt Hackett could have been a future goalie, starting goalie. And Larson could be like an ongoing stud. But Larson's got like one point in like 20 games, 22 games, so whatever, he's not looking good at all. I mean, if I'm complaining about Charlie Coyle, I'd be screaming about Larson. <laughs> um, and Hackett's not doing well in their minor league affiliate. In fact, he's very Darcy Comfort-like so far. Yuck. Uh, as I get sidetracked here all over the place, but yeah, Mike Yo would be fired if the Wild were to lose all three of those games. I think Mike Yo does not survive the week, if that's the case. With that said, I think the Wild do defeat the Colorado Avalanche, in a fun type of 4-2 to two type game. I think they come out with a ton of energy. They need to win that game, and they get it done. That's just my opinion. <laughs> with that said, this could go any way possible. This could go any way, shape, or form, because this team makes no sense. <laughs> Most of the time. <laughs> uh, so then, the Wild head to Nashville. Uh, and after a nice little win against the Colorado Avalanche, Back to back, have to travel to Nashville. I don't like, I don't like going into this one either, and that sucks. I hate saying that. I hate it. Oh boy, Nashville's not a very good team. With that said, though, the Wild have a chance. I think the Wild have a legit chance to beat this team. And unfortunately, well, the Wild are one and one against Nashville. They they seem to always lose in Nashville, but they usually usually win here, and that's what took place this year. A three to two victory for Nashville on October the eighth in the, the Music City or whatever in the city of uh, Elvis, <laughs> and of course got shut out by Josh Harding on Tuesday, October the twenty second. Nice little game there, two to nothing for Minnesota. Um, they're not that good, obviously, and they hate <laughs> Ryan Suter. This one's all about Ryan Suter right here. If Suter can go in there, respond to those boos in a good way, and get something done, hey, who knows what's going to happen. But I'm not really confident going going into Nashville right now. You know, with, with the unstable situation with the coach and such, uh, Nashville doesn't score many goals, obviously. Their goalie situation is all over the place, which could make this a winnable game. It, uh, boy, their goalies are not very good. Uh, man, uh, they're averaging about, man, they're giving up a lot here. They're giving up almost three goals a game, all of them. So uh, one of them is really bad, but that was just one game. That was a Darcy Comfort performance, that being Hellberg. He was hell-bent on losing that one. Uh, Pekka Rian is the best of the bunch. But he's only played nine games this year in net, unfortunately for him. He's had a decent career over the years. But, um, obviously he's not doing good. He's out indefinitely with an infection in his hip. And that was as of the end of December. So, yeah, he's not going to be available. So, actually, the Wild, I think the Wild might win this one, now that I look at that correctly. <laughs> not too excited about uh, these other guys. Um, I'm going to go with the win. I'm going to go on a limb and pick the Wild to win this one. I hope they win. They need to win this game, frankly. They're just a 500 team. So... I'll go with a, see I said 4-2 to two against Colorado, a very emotional win there. This one's going to be one of those really grinded outers. I'm going to go with a 2-1 to one victory for the Wild, possibly in the shootout in this one, believe it or not. Then again, against that goal, you would think, no, I'm crazy. I'm crazy. 3-2 to two win for the Wild, possibly in the shootout. Not going to score a lot, but they're going to actually score. It's not going to be like a crappy 4-1 to one loss against this team. And if it is, boy, oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> if Mike Yo survives this next week, I, I would be very surprised if the Wild lose like all four of those games that I just reviewed. There's no way Mike Yo would be coming back after that. But I don't think the Wild will lose all four. In fact, we're going to go two and two. 
believe it or not. So, there you go, guys. There you go. Hope for the best there. <laughs> In a big way. Very important games against Western Conference teams coming up. Extremely important. Mike Yo's career with the Wild will be on the line. Or he'll be with the NHL's next uh, assistant coach out there to join somebody's staff next season. Or possibly an AHL staff. Who, who knows what'll happen. So we are going to conclude the previews with that one. Four games. Boy, it's kind of busy. Busy schedule there. Busy schedule. I said it was going to be brief, and it's going to be very brief, pretty much, for the Iowa Wild. Really? Nobody's doing anything. <laughs> okay, I shouldn't say that. Eric Halla continuing to lead the team in scoring now with 17 points, scoring his ninth goal of the season in the AHL level. Brett Balmer, who also has nine goals down there, has been on the Wild's fourth line. Uh, he was out there tonight because, of course, the Justin Fontaine injury. So Brett Balmer getting some rare action with the Wild this this year. Not been seeing too much time. Uh, man, just imagine a line with Brett Balmer, Stefan Veyu. <laughs> oh, that's tough. And uh, Kyle Brozniak has been centering the fourth line. That's what's crazy about it. Kyle Brozniak's been centering the fourth line, like I mentioned. Oh, man, that's a weird line. Balmer, Brozniak, and Veyu. Mm. But, yeah, there have been AHL players all over the Minnesota Wilds roster of late. Um, Zucker, I hope he can stay up here. But nobody's really got the opinion that he will. Bit of a gambler. Makes makes mistakes. But hey, at least he scored two goals in two nights. We'll see. Zach Phillips still not doing all that much. <laughs> he's got le- he's got only 15 points in 31 games. And then the two defensemen kind of still doing their thing. Jonathan Blum and Brian Connolly. Not dominant, but good for, the, good for defensemen level anyway. None of the prospects really are doing all that much. And that's frustrating. Mm. Really, uh, yeah, it's all about Eric Halla. I think he's going to be, uh, he's probably going to lead the team in scoring down there if he doesn't come back up here. And i got to think Eric Halla is going to be the fourth line center again, and possibly for the long haul here, and then possibly maybe at some point third line center. He may end up replacing Kyle Brozniak down the line. We'll see how things go with that. But that all is yet to be determined when the time comes. Now, i got to think you might want to save some money from Kyle Brozniak going into the offseason, especially if you want to bring in a Thomas Vanek and maybe add another blue liner to this up-and-down blue line. Oh, boy. There's just too many injuries, too much this, too much that going on. Spurgeon's hurt now, too. It's just, oh, it never ends. It never ends with this team, with the injuries, or this or that. And, of course, yes, I know injuries factor in to the Wild not playing well, but the constant swan dive under Mike Yo is really frustrating for everybody. I mean, other teams survive from injuries. Look what the Penguins did with all the guys that were out. They kicked our you-know-whats. So, why don't we start kicking people's you-know-whats? <laughs> and yeah, we kind of sort of did with Washington tonight, but, hey, this that's why this week really counts. Keep it up, guys. Keep it up. Maybe go 3-1 and one this week, and Mike Yo will, Mike Yo's hot seat will cool off quite a bit if that were to take place. Maybe not completely, but Hey, for the time being, he'll feel a hell of a lot safer (laughs) behind the bench with the Minnesota Wild than if he goes 1-3, or of course, the ultimate, probably death nail of 0-4 this coming week. He goes 0-4 against these guys, he's done. I don't think there's any doubt about it. I don't think Leopold would continue, because there's too many good players uh, on the roster, even after the injuries and such. Um, I gotta think Fontaine will be back at some point fairly soon anyway, and it's Fontaine here. This isn't Pominville, it's Fontaine. So, again, there you go. You still have Suter, who's playing out of his mind right now, obviously. Koi was playing good. Parisi should be back fairly soon. Cross your fingers there. Uh, And Harding's an up and down thing all the time because of this and that, but right now it's the flu, so cross your fingers there. All right, everybody, stay warm. It's polar vortex time, and I can hear the wind blowing in the background already. (laughs) Stay warm, everybody. Enjoy watching the hockey, maybe even watch some football as well. (laughs) If you're you're okay watching football and hockey at the same time or back and forth, all that good stuff, go wild. This is a big week for the wild and the coach. We'll be back soon next week for the big 75.
Thank you.